us in Valencia, or as we've got repeat, another repeater up on a, a hill up in this sort of area, and that's also transmitting it back. Is the range is the range of those of those signals? Is that line of sight? Is that why you've got an antenna set up all along the way? Part, partly that, um, and also partly because the the even though John was saying before that the the radios in in the kits on the boats are a higher power, they're still not probably quite strong enough to reliably get the data back to us. I think, uh, John, you might be able to correct me. They're five watt transmitters. Yeah, yeah. So they're I mean, they're twelve. About, essentially about more like fifteen watts. Yeah, but I think the the power on the our relay boats though is twenty five watts. So whilst um, the the race boats themselves are, are transmitting at a, a good power, the the power on the relay on the relay boats is is far greater. We couldn't put that amount of power on the on the race boats themselves because no. of the yeah just the, the teams wouldn't allow us basically. And 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 it's uh, any any uh, reconciliation problem you have is solved by timestamps on the actual data. That's right. Yeah. So we've got the the data is coming in multiple paths. I mean, we, we might be receiving it sort of eight to ten times here, but it has that timestamp. So basically, if something comes in which is we've already received, or if it's um, old data, we just throw it out. So we're just displaying the latest data. And we're getting that reliably coming in here during the racing four times a second. So. Well, me, before we finish with the data, I have one question: uh, uh, Is um, things have changed a lot in the past few years uh, with the ability to move information around? Are there any developments that are going to enable you guys to not have to have so many different pathways, which really is where the expense starts to get you know multiply itself? Uh, is there anything that's going to get more reliable that will allow this to be easier to use? I guess um, the advancements in the, the satellite technology, the, the reason we have the multiple paths with the radio is because radio can be interrupted. Uh, there's a lot of other things happen out on the race course. In previous regattas, we've had instances when uh, the King of Spain has arrived, and one of the things that happened is the, the entourage and the boat that he goes out on the, all of his... Uh, Secret Service, they put up all sorts of scramblers and it, it has an effect on the race course area. Uh, the, the volume of cellular um, traffic and the number of TV transmitters that were out on the course last time gave us some problems. There's not quite the same fleet of boats that go out to follow the, the racing here, so we're, we're hoping that uh, that's not going to be a, a problem. But radio is subject to interference. I think last time we had a day where all of a sudden we started picking up traffic from a taxi operator coming in over our frequency. It's, it's, it's hard to say this frequency is ours, nobody else uses it. So right. we're kind of um, limited in that. The satellite mode of um, getting the data ashore is possibly something that we'll look at more into the future. It's a more costly uh, method of uh, data transmission. But um, generally, it's more reliable. The, the, the biggest downside with, this, with that is that it is, uh, there's a bit of a delay, we've found. So uh, the, the radio is our preferred method because it, it is a, a more immediate. We get the data pretty much live, uh, and it just gives us a better result all over. Got it. John? Yeah. Um, Paul, you know, I gave you a little hard time yesterday about the jib being up on the boat, right, on Oracle as they were going upwind. And to show that they solve all these problems, there it is. It's down. And while you were doing the interview clean, uh, I watched them. It rolled up nice and tidy there. And so, no, that's really good. Oh, go back to the roll. Little bug in, it was just a little bug in the software, unfortunately. I did have the, the code sort of set to to do all of this, but um, something, I must have, something I must have uh, commented out or left out in the, when we went to air yesterday. So this is the, the moment here. So we've got all of these little details of, of we build into the animation where we can. Like you say, we sort of talk about the, the sort of the, trying to sort of add the realism to it. So trying to get the heel angle as close as we can, the, the sail set, et cetera. No. No. Talk us through how much of this, this animation is automatic, uh, relying on the data, and how much of it is manual. Well, the only real reliable thing that we have is the GPS position. We do, as John said before, have some heel angle information. At the moment, it's something that's relatively new to us, so we're still playing with how the, using that as raw data and just making that automatic. So at the moment I'm using that as a guide, but sort of manually overriding it to, to make sure everything still sort of looks correct. Um, 
everything else pretty much is manually derived. So we are going back to this interface here. This is what we then use to control a number of things. So um, we control where the, the marks go so that basically I'm positioning marks in the, the places that they should be. But then I'm controlling the, the wind, which then controls the ley line. So the, the diamond, as it may be hard to see on the, on the monitor, but this sort of diamond lattice that we have here is what we have that um, sets the wind. So I can say that the wind is going to the right, and therefore the, uh, the lines all shift to the right. It may be easing off, so the diamonds sort of spread themselves out. Once and that'll instantly change these ley lines on the other That's screen. pretty much right. So if I send that information through, I just it, it will then control the the angles and it will just animate slowly to, to match that on here. Have you found that being really a non yachty has helped or hindered your ability to uh, do a good job with this stuff? Uh, I don't know. I, I guess it's I'm not a yachty definitely, but uh, I've sort of had well this is my sixth America's Cup, so I've had some <laughs> experience doing this part of it and getting getting to sort of know what happens at this end. So I, I think I've got a reasonably good eye now for for what is a good angle and what what the wind should sort of look like to make the, the ley lines look right on the on the animation. Can you talk us through real quickly uh, uh, how you go about setting up the uh, building the, the the background the the mountains the the shoreline that so. Yep, uh, a lot of that is by we get some, uh, satellite image or uh, aerial photography from a number of places. Um, we just basically go online and see where we can get it. Obviously, the, the cheaper we can find it, the better. Uh, for the wide kind of a view, uh, if I go to the, the other display that I've got on here, this is sort of the interface now that we use to control it. It doesn't run very fast on this laptop. Over in the van, we've got two much higher powered computers, which um, runs this a lot more smoothly. Um, but I can, I can tweak a, a view on here, and I, where I can just select a view and then track to that. So that, that shows you the, the extent of the landscape. It's probably easier if I just control it manually on here now. So if I pull out, so this, that sort of shows you where we have modelled. Uh, you can see the, the coastline sort of disappears further up, but uh, we tend to not fly that far away. So this, at this sort of level here, we're looking at a satellite photograph that uh, the modelling guys back home have taken. And then as we get in closer, we'll have found some aerial photography so that the detail is a lot better, even to the extent you can see sort of earthworks, mm -hmm. things like that. And then we actually then have people just go out on the ground and take photographs of the, of the key buildings so that once we get to a, the actual area that we want to sort of show in detail, all of the buildings then are as, as accurate as we can get. So we see the, the Tinglados, all the various team bases as they were back in 2007, and uh, things like this is the, the building we're sitting in right now. That one hasn't been modelled quite as uh, as detailed, but the key bu buildings that stand out, they just take a bit of time and build a model of it, and uh, then we can fly over it through through the, the course of the day, show off different things. Great. Well, guys, obviously a ton of work uh, that has gone together to make a really neat system, and um, I think we're going to keep watching you and hopefully hear more about you, uh, or more from you guys on, uh, on further development. So Paul and John and Gertrude and you guys, thank you so much. For John Casey, I am Mr. Clean. <laughs> See ya.